Okay guys, so now we're in the front and this is our other fig. This was given to us by one of uh husband's coworkers. Yep. And we're very David. thankful. Thank you, Dave again. Thank you, Dave. And um so you what what kind of fig did you say this was? This is a Kadota fig. These are the green figs. They're the um they're the um fig newton figs. And this one also and grew, figs. grew quite tall. It's mm -hmm. not as tall as the other, but it's probably a couple of what inches, probably like yeah. five, no, like eleven inches to get to the size of the other one. So it, they grew really quickly. It's also like one stem, which I really like, but that's not gonna be there like that way for a long time, right? Because you're gonna make it bushy too. Yeah, I'll probably make it bushy too, or or maybe I'll let it grow one more year, mm -hmm. and then because it seems to be a little bit slower. Um, I did, I fed it a couple of times and now it's just taking off, so. What did you feed it with? Uh, just gave it good soil, put rock dust in there, and gave it some of our new scraps, Echo Scraps mm -hmm. fertilizer. How come it's like some this? Worm casting. Did something try to Unfortunately, it? the Kadota figs are very sensitive to temperatures that are, um, that go above 95. Which has been in the past three weeks. Yeah. They get burnt, we noticed. Okay, so And that's it's very important to keep your Kodota fig very well wa watered mm -hmm. because it's not like the hardy mm. fig, which can really take quite a bit of punishment. So, and where did you say that probably was fruit growing? Right here. Usually the fruit goes in here. Now, these are not, technically, they're not fruit, as you probably already know. They're oh, flowers. He, okay, here. Yes, the fig is supposed to be a flower that grows from inside out. And what you're eating is probably what is normally in the center of a flower. So this is what um, the fruit would be. So that's where it started to grow. So as we were sharing, we already planted some of the winter crops. The problem is that since it's not that cold, we got attacked by cabbage loopers. And unfortunately, we also have some white fly. Yeah. And so this was our tomatoes if you remember and now you have well we have dinosaur kale and then we have uh, Swiss chard some lettuces different types of lettuce uh, this is a bean right? what kind of bean is that? Mm, I think it's contender maybe? I can't remember the name of the variety I just planted it about uh, three weeks ago so it got a little bit nibbled on the so we'll see hopefully we'll get some beans and what about the lettuce that looks like striped? Oh, that's the sorrel. Sorrel Red lettuce? Sorrel. Yeah. It's, we like it. I like it. It's got a lemony flavor. I don't like it by itself, but when you put it like in an omelet or something? Yeah, uh, like... What's that? Mildew, battery mildew. I gotta put some. So when you get mildew, what do you do? Neem. Neem oil, and then yeah. when it's not in the... In the sun, right? Because then it gets burnt? Well, it's because right now it's it's hot, really hot during the day. Mm -hmm. And then it gets cool at night and in the morning. There's a lot of so the moisture. Okay, so since we had a lot of cabbage loopers and white flies, what did you do to get rid of those? Well, the white flies, they did this. We went and go bought some at the place and we bought some paper plates and then we bought some sticky, sticky foot. And mm -hmm. I'm going to... I, I don't know if you could see all those little dots. Those are white fly. Yeah. And then we got another, other flies and other bugs that are not as bad, but we really have a problem with white fly. So even though um, worm castings is really good, we really needed to do something to control the, how many they were. Because you could see there's a lot of spots. Um, well, maybe you can't see, but there's a lot of spots in the, in the um, eggplant leaves, and that's damaged by the white fly. And then what I'm going to do next for the, because these are white fly babies, you they probably really, can't see them. They really loved um, the eggplants, unfortunately. Yeah. So they caused a lot of damage. Well, not really. Well, in those and then in the yeah. lettuce and stuff. But those plates seem to be working fine. Yeah, there's there's less of them. So I tried an experiment. I yeah, tried to see the, eggs. the green. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and the white and it looks like the green or the yellow is works better than the green. But the green also worked. Yeah. So if you can't find Just yellow, you know, the green will work if you buy a, a like green plate and put that. Um, 
but that's like your last resort. It'll work, but yellow is always going to be better. They like the yellow. The I guess because he looks like the pollen or something. I don't know. And what about yeah. all these little flies? The I have no idea where these come from, but they seem to really like the plants. But are they good or bad? I think they're eating the sugars that the white flies are secreting. Mm. So do you think it's a white fly predator? Yeah, no, I think it's a white fly. They're feeding them. <laughs> oh, so they're not good then? Yes. So probably if we didn't have the white fly, we wouldn't have the flies on there. Okay. And this is our, oh, yeah. Okay. This is our yellow swallowtail cocoon. Mm -hmm. um, one of the only surviving caterpillars, because we've had quite a few in here. What happens is that something comes and eats them. Yeah or a bird. Or maybe one of our lizards or a bird. Could be eating them in the yeah. meantime. Mm -hmm. but apparently they love the Rudo. Did we ever show this? No. Um, we also have here an African basil. Yep. That I got a little munched. I love basil, but this African basil has a very strong flavor, so by itself, it wasn't my <laughs> favorite thing. But with a salad or mixing it, maybe how I eat the other basil with some cream cheese in a bagel, <laughs> it wouldn't be that bad. Um, and then, this is a new addition that husband got me, thank you very much. And what's it called? It's a uh, pink lemonade lime. Yep. And uh, it has like um, a little bit of stain, that's the way it is. The uh, variegated. What do you call that? What? The variegated. Variegated? Mm-hmm. Well, it has variegated leaves and supposedly the lime, the fruit itself is also like striped, like kind of like the leaves, also variegated? Mm-hmm. Okay. It has stripes like white and green. Yep. So we'll see how that tastes whenever it comes out. Um, it's small, but I'll take off. And it's pink inside. It's doing really good. It's pink, well, pink lemonade, right? Yeah, that's right. The Jekyll one recovered, as you can see. Yes, just needed to give it some, um, some fertilizer. And yeah. it looks quite good. And what else do we have here? We have the African basil that's going... This is our blueberry. It's starting to take off as far as growing leaves, so hopefully next year. Mm -hmm. But we had like three blueberries here, no? Yeah, one of them died. The little wire one. Mm. So now we just have two varieties. And something was munching on it too? I think? Yeah, we don't, I don't know what it was. I never found out, but something was munching on it. And then, and well then it was getting, the heat was mm -hmm. killing it. We have the dragon fruit. It has a lot of spider webs, but it's good that we leave the spider webs. I don't like them, but you know what? They catch bugs that might not be as good yeah. for the other plants, and so I'm fine with that. And it's growing like crazy, and plus again, it's, we already it's trimmed it. Danny long legs, not like a black widow or something, so they don't do anything bad. We trimmed it, and look at it. We so trimmed it, growing. and it's still growing again. The problem is that it it gets the roots start grabbing into the ah, into the wall, and uh, so we need to pull those because otherwise, then you have the roots stuck to the wall, and that's not fun. Um, but you can cut those and then just give it to a friend or something, and I'll just plant them, and then you'll have new um, dragon fruit. And then we have the mandarin tree here, which we only have like four, four fruit left, just so you can see it's kind of. And so as you can see, this is the size of the fruit right now. It's very delicate right now. Um, it got hurt really bad when they painted um, the fences because there was a power wash. But we still kept a couple of fruits, which is good. We don't have to wait many, many years to get fruit. And I think that was fine. So I think by the autumn, later, probably the fruits are going to start changing so we can eat it. Yeah, well, no, probably December, I think. In December? Yeah, around Christmas. So it'll be a little Christmas tree. And going back here... This plant is supposed to be a poblano pepper, which is very common to eat in Mexico, and that one's husband noticed the size of the poblano pepper, because <laughs> back home we usually it use it for stuff, stuffed peppers, but here you usually, in the U.S., you use the Anaheim, right? Or the no, pastilla? Yeah. You use the pastilla pepper, and in Mexico we use the poblano pepper most of the time, which is bigger. So this is how the flowers look. It's usually like the normal peppers, and then they're growing small. As you can see there, there's some fruit, and hopefully they'll grow as big as the ones I know. <laughs>
Yeah, this year um, got some has been a horrible year minor for peppers. Mm -hmm. still, we still don't know why. Yeah, it was a bad year for peppers. Actually, hasn't had to cut down the Italian peppers. Yeah. Um, where we showed you the plates, that's where they were supposed to be. So we just cut them and left them as mulch for compost. But that's about it with that. So hopefully these peppers will do good. There's our dragon pepper, which hasn't done very well either. The peppers are supposed to be bigger. They're just small. Which was the Thai peppers, which are the same size of previous videos that we've showed you. Yeah. And then well, the one that was very impressive this time was the eggplant. Yes. Because we got a lot of them. Oh, they're Young. So the inkland's going to start slowing down. Um, we've pretty much, they're pretty much almost done with the exception of maybe the Asian one. Mm -hmm. It may last longer, but Which the uh, Italian ones are almost done. Mm -hmm. Probably in the next couple of months they'll be dying down or slowing down because of the weather. And those of you who have never seen blossom and rot in eggplant, in eggplant, there it is, right there. Which one? These, these are all blossom and rot. See? Oh, the dark ones. Looks just like tomatoes. I'm, I didn't know they could get that, but... Apparently they could. From yeah. overwatering or for lack of water? Mm, lack of water, not well and consistent watering. Well, it was really hot, right? Yeah. As we mentioned, these past three weeks. Yeah, and then they're short, maybe short on calcium, so... And so for you guys that were wondering, once your eggplant turns like yellow, yellowish or With sorta, this one particular variety. With this Rosabianca, it means it's sitting. So you can just save that one for seeds. We have a lot of them, so we don't know if we're going to save it or not. So, And that one, well, it's still growing for us to eat. 